And what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Chris Aiken Presents. I, of course, am Chris Aiken. That dude over there, that's Mr. Eric Farentinos. Eric, how are you? Doing great, Chris. Back from the 80s rock invasion Look at weekend. You. <laughs> Look and at I you. Survived. Just, just tearing it up with Mr. Stephen Piercy. I assume it was a good weekend? It was. The that's show cool. went on. I thought it wasn't going to happen because of the rain un right. unforeseen rain i was telling you about that that morning on saturday sure. well we'll get to all that here in a bit but we are not going to waste any time we have a guest waiting to get on this show he was so anxious that he was here before the show even started wow. that's how much he wants to be on the show that's the kind of friends we'd like to have that's right and plus if i'm not mistaken and he could tell us for sure but i think he's playing with our mutual friend our our show friend brandon paul right is that right I that's think. what i'm hearing that's what i'm hearing too so we can um we can explore all that the guy's name is kurt dimer he is um he's going to be out on tour for the next probably two months and depending on what kind of music you like you should be able to see him because he's going to be on tour with skid row and buck cherry that's when i'm going to see him here in cleveland and then he's going to be back on tour in october with mushroom head so D musically diverse and his music definitely fits both styles so why don't we do this let's give everybody a taste of kurt's music and then we'll bring kurt in and we'll get right down to this shit shall we so let's we go shall. let's go then this is burn together this is kurt dimer and we'll be back with kurt right after this it's chris Hager presents nothing is private no landline in the room Secrets are hacked Wait, it'll all be over soon Double down, you don't have to believe Can't let it break you You know the remedy I need Make it all feel brand new Burn together Feel the pain When we are all one We can sustain Right, that is going to be some good listening here when we get to uh, get to the tour. But right here to talk all about it is Kurt. Not just the new single "Doom," but like that song that we played there and everything that you've got online, man. Great stuff. Yeah, that that song burned together about forty, fifty pounds ago. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, thanks for reminding me. It's always good to have that motivation. But yeah, that that song uh, it's one of the first we put out videos we put out and. Uh, obviously that was uh jeff tate along with me so we we did that uh burn together featuring jeff tate and might have another little surprise coming here soon so tell us about uh, jeff tate like how he got involved with this tune well my uh management back in it was uh 2021 um was uh andy gold and paul gargano okay. and paul gargano is really good friends with the tates and as we were kind of planning out what our first tour would be, how we start to present ourselves to the world, I haven't been touring two years yet until September. Uh, they set up a meeting and the Tates came into LA and uh, we met for dinner one night and we put together a plan for us to open up for them on about 40 plus dates starting in September of uh, 21. And then we agreed that I wanted him on this song burn together because I thought my voice along with his offsetting each other telling the tale of the demise of the modern family um, would just be so appropriate and he agreed to come on board and be featured on that song and then shoot the music video and then we uh, headed out on tour so very so cool that's how it all came together through Paul Gargano so thank you Paul very nice well dude speaking of jeff and and we'll get to kurt dimer in a minute but speaking of yeah. jeff from everything i've heard he can be difficult to work with how was he to work with was he easy to work with or, or... yeah yeah he uh 
flew in. We uh, rode out to the desert together, and that video we shot, it was 116 degrees that day out Oof. in Palmdale, and uh, we were out at Eclectic West, and it was brutal, and he just went there. I mean, we're shooting this video, and he's in the in the dome and everything, singing at the top of his lungs, you know, even though it's a music video. It was just amazing, and we became friends, and, you know, it's, you know, you, you treat people with respect, you get respect back, and Jeff and I get along great. Uh, when we went on tour, I even got invited on the bus a few times. And uh, we're just, we still stay in touch now and uh, might be doing something else here in the future. Very good, man. Well, dude, obviously, man, a, a lot of the people that are hearing hearing and seeing you here with us for the first time are probably going, who is this guy? You know, <laughs> so why don't we start? Yeah, here? The, why don't we? Yeah, exactly. Who the fuck's so, Kurt Dimer? Yeah, exactly. So who the yeah. fuck is Kurt Dimer? I guess that's, that's the obvious question. shirts at the show. You should sell those. <laughs> who the fuck's who Kurt Dimer? Yeah. 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 I got, that's another one I'll add to my arsenal because I got some, <laughs> some pretty crazy t-shirts coming. <laughs> But no, uh, Kurt Dimer is just this guy who grew up uh, his whole life uh, kind of doing what everybody told him he can't do. Uh, I started working young. I figured out how to graduate high school without studying. I uh, <laughs> went to college. I partied my ass off for a few years. I was in a ba playing around in bands around where I was going to school at University of Cincinnati. And a couple before that, it took me like three colleges to get out. And uh, then I met met my kid's mom i have three boys uh 28 27 and 17 all the same mom but i met her young we got married young and she helped straighten my ass out i got out of my my degree and then i ended up getting a master's degree in management and marketing from uh because i worked in the oil business for chevron and stuff but so i kind of laid the music down my creative side down i had a lot of anxiety and panic stuff when I was young and I couldn't figure out what it was. So I self-medicated like many do and got, that didn't work. And then I finally figured out my brain didn't make serotonin, had to figure that all out on my own through my twenties. And by the end of my twenties, I figured out how to get a serotonin uptake inhibitor in my brain. And now I feel, have felt like a normal human being ever since the late nineties, uh, that has normal functioning serotonin right. level. And started my own oil companies in 1999 above my garage with money I raised from buying and selling real estate because I wasn't handed anything in life. Um, but I wasn't born into money and uh, took care of my parents and my sister and my dad as they passed away in the decade of the 10, 2010 to 20, lost both of them. And I went to go... Uh, for my oil brand Starfire, I went down to uh, shoot a cameo to present the check to the winner in a movie called Trading Paint starring John Travolta and Shania Twain and Toby Sebastian from Game of Thrones. And the next thing you know, they're taking pictures of me and they cast me. They say, we need a speaker to be the track announcer at the end of the movie and interview the winner in the winner's circle. Awesome. So... How could how could I not do that? It looked I, I look for signs in life all around me, and I'd lost my dad, my sister. She was a theater person, and she could have been on The Voice. She has the operatic, like a Jeff Tate voice, but a female, just crazy. And I said, yeah, and I learned my lines. And the next thing I know, I'm shooting a scene with John Travolta, and he's we're talking through it, and. I end up in the movie and then I get cast in Halloween in 2018. I get killed by Michael Myers. I'm the bald guy in the gas station. Teeth come out of my mouth. Right. So I'm like, okay, there's my sign. And uh, <laughs> so I, I started weaning out. I, I go, I'm going to go back and do it. My kids are older now. I've raised my kids. I've been there for them all the way. And now I'm going to go back and do what I wanted to do when I was 20, when I'd see Ozzy and Randy Rhodes or, I saw Iron Maiden with Paul in the band, you know, before sure. Bruce and all those bands. And I've, I said, man, I want to be on there and feel that energy, but I'm too nervous. So now that I had figured all that out and it was the right timing and I conquered and created companies that people told me I couldn't do, well, I'm going to go fight this battle and I'm going to get, go back and do the music I wanted to do. So I hooked up with a, 
writer friend of uh, Ben Trexel in Alabama when I was shooting more uh, smaller projects to get more acting under my belt. And uh, he had a few songs and he sounded like a wedding singer on them. And I'm like, let me sing the way I used to sing back in the day. And we did three songs. We kept writing songs. Burned Together was one of them. And uh, took it out to L.A. And this is about 2019 when I got back into the vocal singing and being a front man. Right. And took it out 2020 to L.A., a demo under the name of Bald Man. And COVID had just started. And the, my management at the time, this was pre-Paul and Andy, um, said, let's get this remixed. Because David Bendeth had done the Bald Man uh, demo and he said let's take it to somebody in LA one of the one of the mixers out here and Chris Lord Algae agreed to look at it wow. he liked my style the way I tell a story him and I went out to dinner at Monty's out there by Woodland Hills or out wherever it is that's his fit one of his favorite places and him and I become great friends he took me under his belt he just said, let me show you how we can develop you and develop your voice. And because I couldn't sing worth a shit, you know, I, just, <laughs> I hadn't sung in 30 years. Right. And, and uh, he said that little cover you and Ben, Ben wanted me to do have a cigar. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm feeling the have a cigar vibe the way Ben and I were doing it. And Chris said, let me show you how we're going to do have a cigar. And this is after we had formed our relationship and he was believing in my original demo stuff. Okay. And I came back uh, into a studio and I listened to the guitar solo, or I think I was at my studio in Woodland Hills, and I heard this solo and it just blew me the blew me the fuck away. And I go, Chris, who is that? And he finally told me it was Phil X, you know, plays in Bon Jovi. Right. And that's how Phil and I met. And then Phil and I shot that music video you'll see on YouTube. For have us that's the first time phil and i met that day wow. and uh that's how it all i got back into it and the rest phil and i started writing together phil played out the first several tours with us because we had written a lot of the music that you hear now sure. or what we had recreated that ben and i wrote so that's kind of in a nutshell how everything kind of got to where we are today. And I'm talking to you folks. So right on, man. Well, dude, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, me and you and my, from you and I, from hearing your story, we're sort of kindred spirits in that I, I got hurt on a job and that's when I learned to be very productive. And since then written six books, started three businesses, you know, doing the yeah. same, the same thing. Yeah. And, and literally right now I've just kind of decided that, yeah, I still have the businesses, but I want to, I want to do this, you know, right. be interviewing right. bands and be doing entertainment. That's just what I decided to do. And I'm doing right. it for me. There's no better joy in the world than the other stuff's great. Don't get me wrong. And I'm sure you're, right. you're probably in the same oh, boat. Yeah. You're, you're probably thrilled with the oil companies and when they do success, when they are successful. Right. But there's nothing more passionate that you can get into than the passion project that the rest of your life has allowed you to do. Do you feel the same way? Oh, you've hit, you hit the nail on the head, man. It's just like, I, 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 why my kids were, I was raising my kids. I started this in 99. They were little guys, little guys at that time. And I worked nine to nine, a 12, 15 hours a day. I wrote every order. I started the whole company by myself. And now we have over a hundred something employees and a big blend plan up in Pennsylvania and big distribution that distributes all over the world. We supply all of Jamaica for their government, all their oil. I mean, we're all over the world now. And I started this thing above my garage and everybody said, you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> and then I was just like, okay, well, I built it. And I was, I told uh, Darren Ward, my good friend, who was kind of my side by side on the whole thing. Once I felt comfortable enough that he knew enough now, now I just started weaning myself out and I said, look, man. And he's like, you're not going to do movies. You're, you're not going to be able to make it in a row. I'm like, dude, I'm a free spirit. I've done all this. You wouldn't be here if I didn't take the chance. That's I'm right. going to go do what I want to do. And my companies will be worth more money if you're not relying on me to sell. I should only be involved in the big decisions now. And right. he keeps me abreast of stuff. And I don't worry about it at all. And I focus on my music and my acting. And that's it. 
Good, which it. blows everybody's minds away in the oil business. But you know what? <laughs> right. Fuck them. Fuck them. They said I couldn't build my company, and now they're all afraid of us. So fuck them. I don't care. Dude, <laughs> it, it, it's so it's so amazing too how many, and, and I went through the exact same thing. So many people said, "Oh, what are you doing? You're wasting your time. You're going to lose your house. You're going to go right, broke." Right, That's right. all I heard for for. My dad told me, "You you try to go be a rock star, you're going to be living under a bridge." Right. Yeah. Exactly. Told me. But see, the beauty of the beauty of my dad is he had a shrine of all my oil when he was bedridden his last few years, and he was my biggest fan in the oil, but he. And I know he knows because he's with me all the time that I do the rock thing now. But my sister and my dad both passed before I got back into this, which is the other odd thing, because it's like their spirits. She was the big musician, thespian. He was a big sang in the church choir, baritone, corporate guy. And I just know they're with me, you know, and now I'm like doing all the things they love to do that everybody told me I couldn't do so. Right on, man. Well, it's speaking crazy. speaking of your dad, you have the song "My Dad," which is super personal. I mean, that's you talk about laying it out there. That is about as <laughs> that yeah. is as roadmap as it gets, which is difficult. I, I know. And again, I write books, and I write books about me. And you know, it's difficult to put yourself yeah. out there like that, especially for you. I would imagine in a very tough situation like that. Talk a little bit about this song and specifically about sharing that piece of your world with anybody that hears it. Well, I mean, I wouldn't even first and foremost be able to write a, a song like that or, or present it to the world like that if it wasn't for my dad and the way he was. Um, you know, I was very fortunate to have a dad who always supported me. Was he the smartest on certain things in life? No, but who is? And uh, But he always was there for me. He took care of me. When I was uh, going through my panic stuff when I was young and doing a lot of that white stuff, if you will, <laughs> my dad was always there to help me and bail, you know, bail me out of trouble and keep me, just keep pushing me to get out of this rut. And, you know, I was sitting one night, I think it was like 2020, and uh, I'm just, or maybe mid to 2019, and I'm just on my back porch. At the time, I was drinking beer. I don't drink beer anymore, but uh, it was uh, just sitting there, had a good little buzz at two in the morning, and that's exactly the words that came out of my brain in like 15 minutes. And those, that's the one song that I haven't gone back and changed any lyrics on. So that was a 15 minute brain dump looking up at the sky my dad feeling a little down drinking beers having a few smokes and that's the song you hear and then phil and chris did the rest with me and made, turned it into what it is so go ahead eric no that's that's uh that's awesome <laughs> I mean, you know uh, go ahead and, go ahead. and we, we all we all have someone we've lost who's meant a lot to us and it doesn't have to mm -hmm. just be to a dad it could be to a sister i could do that easily it could be to your mom it could be to a great friend it could be to just anybody in your life and i wanted to share my emotion and how much i appreciated that person and then wanted to share that with the world and the only thing we got to do is keep spreading it because i think it will touch lives all over the world it's just getting it out there so right on that well, was man, my whole intention there. Well, speaking of getting it out there, man, I, I have to imagine, and, and I'm guessing, and tell me I'm wrong if I'm wrong, but I'm imagining the hardest part about being Kurt Dimer is getting the music out there for a number of reasons. Obviously, the first is the oversaturation of the market in general. There's just so much music out there right now. It's really hard to break through. But I think for you, you specifically, the hardest part has to be that you don't fit nicely in any box. You're not, you're not a metal guy. You're not a rock guy. You're, or maybe you, you are a metal guy. You are a rock guy. There is a country element sort of thing in there. There's like a 69 eyes goth element to your voice. I mean, you fit a lot of places, but not fully in any of them. How has it been finding the audience? Well, every time we go out, we've toured with Jeff Tate. Then our next tour was with Ingve Malmsteen. I took on that. They're like, why are you going out with just a shredder? Right. And 
they're all just going to want to go see Ingve just shred. But we came away from that tour, and everybody's like, thank God you guys were here. We got to watch Ingve do his thing, and then we got to hear this new kick-ass rock band that just, I can't even pigeonhole you anywhere. Right. But we're so thankful. And then we went out with Drowning Pool and got the same thing. And uh, now we're going out with, I think, an even better match with Buck Cherry and Skid Row, and then Mushroom Heads Hard. But every time we play somewhere, because we're unique and different, and we just rock it out, and my band just brings it, people right, are Right now, tripping. speaking of your band, one of my friends is apparently playing with you, Brandon Paul. Is that Brandon correct? Brandon Paul. He is our, yeah, he's the newest uh, member of the band. What I, I've, I've really been wanting to find a cohesive unit because I really loved it when I was younger to go see the same guys in these bands that we Bingo. go to. Yes. Agreed. I think it's very important. And I knew uh, Phil and I had our two years. We did great things together. We're brothers. I appreciate and love him more than anything, but he's, he's with Bon Jovi. He belong. he's on the big stage. And I, I felt, really bad having him have to go play some of these smaller places and i'm trying to build my band where it's the same people so now we've got dango on drums dango jellin um brendan hengel on bass he's my music director now brandon paul on vocals and guitar and then sammy bowler uh, as my lead guitarist so that's the band you should see from now on because they're all in it to win it with me now and uh they know what we got to do so yeah, but Brandon's awesome. In fact, Brandon and I uh, just finished our acoustic version of Doom because we have radio stations that want to hear us play Doom acoustic. So we're going to shoot a video around the fire pit tonight of us doing cool. Doom acoustic, me and Brandon Paul. So make I'll, sure I'll that make his sure hair I doesn't catch it. fire. To, to yeah. <laughs> yeah. <hair. laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Aquanet is what killed all my hair back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I was pulling it all up, spraying that shit all over. And then I'm like, why am I losing my hair at 20? And I'm like, <laughs> now I look like a, I have a cul-de-sac. Let's just park some cars up here. <laughs> I know nice. that tune. So now I just shave it off every, every couple of days. Right on, man. Well, dude, since you mentioned the Skid Row Buck Cherry tour, uh, you know, that's, that's like the next thing that comes up. Starts, um, starts at what? In a, two weeks, right? Oh, no, actually, uh, we're rehearsing all day today, tonight, tomorrow. Then we head out tomorrow night and okay. we play the ha House of Blues in Dallas on Thursday. Okay. Wow. Excellent. Well, I know you're here in like two and a half weeks. Maybe that's where I'm messing it up, but cause you're in, yeah. I'm in Cleveland. You're here on the ninth, I believe. Is that at the Roxino or at the Roxino? Yeah. 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 I think that's, I'd have to look at my master tour, but yeah, I think it's the ninth. Yeah. We're, cause, yeah, I, cause we're at the Roxino. Yeah, what? we're at the Rose Music Center in Huber Heights, I think, the day before that. Okay. But yeah, so you're coming out to the Cleveland show? I'm coming to the Cleveland show, absolutely. Right. <laughs> that's going to be awesome, that's going to be a lot of fun and and for a lot of one I, you know, discovering your music, I definitely want to see you guys perform. I've seen Buck Cherry and Skid Row a million times, but I've never seen Skid Row with Eric in it. So I, right. I'm anxious to see like probably like every other Skid Row fan to see how he fits so it's going to be an exciting yeah. i think it's going to be an exciting show and probably well, chris is talking about show. eric eric groanwall ladies and gentlemen not yeah me. not not this eric <laughs> you were confused yeah and brandon paul my guitarist says eric is just phenomenal singer so i can't wait to hear him perform he just, he just i'm pretty good but mind. i'm mostly known for my guitar work <laughs> um no i'm eric from skid row Oh, okay. yeah, that's that's what he said. He, he just said he's never heard somebody sing like that. Not taking anything away from you, Eric, the guitarist. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very the, much. Which, by the way, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. Love, pleasure love to meet your you, work. too. Yeah, Kurt, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on today. Well, well, Kurt, how did you guys end up on this on the Skid Row tour? We'll start with that one. How'd you end up? Did it just a tour uh, manager or what? No, oh, my management. Uh, I, my manager now is Brian Wheat, who's the bass player oh, in Tesla. Right, right. And then Dean Robson, uh, they co-manage co me, who also manages Tesla with Brian. And uh, my booking agent now is Andrew Goodfriend from TKO. And that's who booked this tour and hooked that up and the Mushroom Head tour. And we're working on some other stuff right now as well. So, But that's how it all came about. 
Sure. Uh, let, let, let's let, go ahead. Eric. Uh, well, you know, not to not to derail the whole thing, but I was really interested in some of the movie talk. Sure. Like specifically for our, the horror fans and stuff that I thought the Halloween thing you were talking about is pretty awesome. What, tell us more about like the, the experience on the Halloween set. Like, was it some, was it the same people that worked on the earlier movies? Was this um, Rob zombies? Was it, was it his version? Oh no, this, this was the official sequel to the first Halloween. Oh wow. This John was going Car way back. John Carpenter. Oh. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. Okay. So then David, Dor David Gordon Green and Danny, I'm not, I'm, I know, I just can't remember his last name, but they uh, got with John Carpenter, and this is the official sequel with um, Jamie Lee Curtis from the original one that uh, had come out back in the late 70s. And they did three of them. They did the one I was in, then Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. So it was that trilogy. Yes. So I'm in. I'm in one of the four real John Carpenter Halloween movies officially. So wow. I'm on a short list of kills, which is cool as fuck. And uh, <laughs> I'm the gas station attendant. If you guys want to watch it, it's 2018. Uh, and Jamie Lee Curtis and James right. Drew Courtney plays um, Michael Myers. But we filmed my scene at a gas station in South Carolina. This is the, you know, granted the second movie I'm in now. You know, it's a whirlwind at this point. And I show up there, and they go, okay, you're going to get killed by Mike, which I knew that, but I, did, I didn't know, am I going to be fighting him? Am I, I had no clue, but then I had to sit in a prosthetic uh, chair with Christopher Nelson, who did the mask, and he made this whole broken jaw, ripped up mouth, face, up. that took about three hours to get it on, about an hour to get it off. And I had to walk around all day with a big towel over my head, because they didn't want the public to see this, because they right. knew it was going to be epic kill. I ended up in prosthetic magazines, signing autographs at horror conventions of my picture, my kill, awesome. the teeth came out of my mouth. I just sit like that position for four hours while they snapped thousands of photos. And then, he, then they were going to put a dummy on the gurney when they rolled out the me as a victim. And I go, you got this all over me. Put me on the gurney, zip me up in the body bag and make it real. They're like, <laughs> Really, you'll do that? That's I go. Yeah, why not? But you just spent three hours on this shit, and I, I'm gonna lay on the gurney. I want to see what it feels like to be zipped up in a body bag while I'm alive. <laughs> you know. So did that you breathe I, in that thing? What was did they have like uh, oh, holes it was, in the back or what? No, it was quick enough though. You know, they just needed to film it being wheel. They wanted to show the zip up, and then we, and then they get you right out of it. They're so worried about your safety. So, so while I'm doing that, and I'm sitting in the gas station, I'm sipping through a straw coke all day because I can only drink a can of out of a can. I can't eat. And James Jude Courtney's sitting there with his Michael Myers face. We're just sitting in there talking about our cats and our families and just our kids. And then we go, and you know, it's just crazy. <laughs> And we became and we became good friends. And then I decided I'm going to do my own horror franchise. So, for you, Eric, uh, I my uh, my buddy Kevin Wayne and I, who's an actor from Alabama, who I'd done some smaller projects with, I said let's do a horror franchise. So, we have Hellbilly Hollow coming out, which is my horror franchise, and it features me as a crazy psychotic motherfucker. And Kevin is my brother, and his name is Tickles. If that tells you anything. <laughs> and we were just crazy nutbags, and we lived at this uh, haunted uh, attraction called Hellbilly Hollow for a month in two trailers. And we went out and filmed this thing, you know, to get, I wanted to just learn how to take my lumps and how the whole process worked. So this film's being sold right now, so it'll be coming out, and I'll let you guys know when I know where. And then this March, I went to Altadena, California. I was out there for a month, and I have my first movie that I star in alongside Lynn Shea from Insidious and Bill Mosley from The Devil's Rejects and all oh, yeah. the Rob Zombie movies. So Lynn, Lynn and Bill and I star in this movie that we just shot in March, which will be coming out soon. There's a big buzz around it, and I have a new character um, that we're introducing to the world called The Grog. So I play the grog. There's nice. the grog right awesome. there. So we have some we so, have yeah. some interesting characters too, uh surprisingly on our show. Uh, <laughs> a couple evil villains. One's uh Sugar Smack, 
that um, <laughs> sure. he actually tortures Chris. He uh, oh, right. sends him he sends him riddles, and if Chris can't solve them, uh, he has to eat what's ever in the package that Sugar Smack sends him. And it ain't good. Oh, it's <laughs> never good. And it ain't good. He has you to do, do one today. Either. Yeah. Oh, real. Very cool. <laughs> and, uh, I would love well, I would love that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Tune in for the rest of the episode. You'll see. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh, it's going to be on this episode. It's cool. on this episode. So you'll see the horrible sugar smack. <laughs> and if you like what you see and you, you, you think he'd be good in a movie or a voiceover, <laughs> let him know. Well, we, we've already got Hillbilly Hollow 2 written and uh, sure. we're just waiting to see what's. I'm talking about the sequel, Kurt. Kurt. I'm talking about the sequel. Okay. All right. <laughs> or we'll just do a little. Sh Maybe you can be in one of my music videos I need to shoot in November. There you go. December. We'll do a little sh <laughs> now sugar we're smack shit. Sugar smack and make an appearance. I'm going to be so yeah. pissed if I've been doing this shit for 20 whatever years and sugar smack gets in a movie before me. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a little package deal. There we go. Yeah, well, dude, package. let's let's kind of let's let's wind down a little bit. Let's talk about the most recent single, um, "Doom." Um, great song, great video. Thank you. Thank um, you. Talk a little bit about it, and um, you know how how it came to be. I, for people that don't know, it is being featured in your movie. Um, yeah, Hellbilly Hollow. It's Hellbilly Hollow. Yeah. It, did the song come before the movie or is the song based out of what you had created with the movie? Well, the song came because the movie's there and we have this big scene at the end that's very epic, kind of like the end of Devil's Rejects. And I wanted something powerful. And yeah, a lot of my songs that you, you can stream anywhere are in the Hellbilly Hollow movie, the soundtracks, about seven of them, along with cool. two other bands. Um, so it, the movie came first and i needed to write a song so again i'm sitting there in my studio here in ohio and late at night and still when i drank beer and i look like i did in the burn together video but uh i'm just writing and i start writing these words and i i wanted it to be powerful explosive like something nobody's heard like kind of when acdc came out with Bon Scott and you never heard a voice like that and it caught on and it's just like rock and roll in your face and I wanted to write lyrics that didn't necessarily that doom is part of the movie a lot of people are experiencing doom but I also wanted to write lyrics that made people think in real life and real life struggles like you know I had back when I was younger or people on heroin or people uh, just doing th pain pills and all that stuff right. that that can take you to the dark side of life and can create instant doom. Look at all the fentanyl deaths. Look at all the drug deaths. One day you're alive and well, the next day it's doom and gloom for everybody. So I wanted to subtly touch on that, maybe make people think and just tell the tale. If you can tell fire to consume, check, you know, it's a little bit subtly about heroin. I don't want to throw it in people's face, but, doom can come from letting all these evil things into our lives so right but on, that's man. how that all came about yeah very cool well we're gonna play we're gonna play a piece of it here for in a second but before cool. we do why don't you throw out those plugs where should we tell people to go to keep up with you to buy merch to buy singles on albums etc yeah oh we're our debut uh double albums coming out next year. Chris Lord Algae and I are finishing that. So you, that's coming, but you can go to Kurt Dimer, D E I M E R.com. You can buy merch there. You can come to our show, buy, sell. I meet everybody at all the shows. You can follow me at Kurt Dimer, D E I M E R on Instagram, Facebook, join the fam club on Facebook, the Kurt Dimer fam club, um, YouTube. What else? X, uh, everywhere uh, subscribe follow us and the website and all of those social medias is the best way right now and the merch is all on the website we're going to also be selling our vinyl on there when that first issue comes out and doing some specialty vinyl and what and whatnot but that's the best way or just google kurt dimer and all kind, kinds of stuff will come up my red carpet debut for halloween nice my, uh, 
death picture. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's just crazy whirlwind the last three years. So, oh, well, it's awesome, man, and we're we're certainly glad to meet you. Certainly, come back when the when the movie is ready to be released. We'd love to. We'd oh, love to awesome. have you come back on and talk that'd about awesome. it, and you know, maybe oh, we I'd do love, a premiere or something on online or something. <laughs> I'd love to. I, I'd love to do that. Very it's cool. A, it's an it's an honor just to be on your show now. So oh. I, a, a sugar smack and tickles off offshoot, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. Side franchise. We'll talk. About yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> I got to see what this sugar smack looks like. Oh, oh no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> I hate fucking sugar smack. <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I'm happy. I'm happy to come on anytime, and uh, look cool, for, I look forward to meeting you, Chris. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be great here in the next week or two. So yeah, we'll definitely hook up at the show, and you know, we'll talk, and we'll we'll see what we come up with. But cool. for right now, let's let's wrap this one up. Um, one more time, it is Kurt Dimer, uh, D E I M E R. Look him up and buy something, people. Don't be cheap, lazy fucks, and stream. Buy cheap. something. Yeah, and you can st stream our music anywhere and follow us on Spotify, all that stuff. So you know what? Stream it from your CD player. How's that? Buy yeah. something. <laughs> buy something wear a shirt while you're streaming it that says kurt dimer on it you know do yeah. do these guys a solid they're out there they're out there busting their ass so so all right kurt yeah, well we're gonna wrap it. it up we're gonna play that we're gonna play a, a clip from the video of doom and kurt thanks so much for joining us here on Chris hey, thank Present. you guys thank you for having me without you guys we couldn't get our music out there so thank you very much both of you and it's a pleasure to meet you both yeah, absolutely, bro. Well, here it is. Too, it is. It is Doom. It is Thanks. Kurt Dimer right here on Chris Aiken Presents. Thank you, guys. Do you ignore? Is it coming for you? A pigment of your mind, something dark and blue. We do drugs, we get lit Hate on each other, that ain't the worst of it Doom Psychos and killers roaming free A lightning bolt, appetite to see Life is scary, a runaway train Take the ride, go out of your brain Fire to consume Check the sonic boom. 